is one of the capital's most notorious unsolved murders. William Sibold, an Edinburgh pub landlord, was found dead in 2003 next to a motorway lay-by, three months after he was reported missing. More than 20 years later, Billy's killer has never been caught. I'm Jolene Campbell from the Edinburgh Evening News, reporting for Shots TV. I'm going to retrace the events leading up to Billy's disappearance and unravel the mystery surrounding his death. Billy was 48. He lived in Portobello with his wife Julie and three children, Liam, Paul and Craig. He was the landlord of the Pop Inn Bar, which used to be located here in Portobello's Main Street. It's now a funeral parlour. The venue is said to be very lively. Before that, he ran a sauna called the Orchid Sauna in Edinburgh's new town. It's understood he sold this shortly before his death. Growing up in Nidri, he was said to be fun-loving and always looking to make a shilling. He'd gone to St Anthony's School in Leith, but he'd left early to make his way in the world. He later trained as a chef at one of the city's most prestigious hotels. He was described as a big-hearted, lovable rogue. He once helped raise thousands of pounds to send a local girl to the Paralympics, making her dreams come true. He was said to be kind to the elderly and even helped struggling families to pay for funeral costs. Billy appeared to be very well liked in his local community. Billy went missing on October the 8th, 2002. After receiving a phone call, he cancelled plans with his wife for the evening, telling her he had to meet a business associate. This was the last time his family saw him alive. Three months later, on the 10th of January 2003, he was found brutally murdered down an embankment, down the side of the A1 near Fort Canard. His body was badly decomposed, leading officers to believe that he could have been killed the night he disappeared. Clothing and jewellery had been removed, likely in an attempt to make it look like a robbery. A gold bracelet and DuPont Gatsby lighter have never been recovered. A post-mortem examination revealed that Billy had died from multiple stab wounds. Police described it at the time as a violent and substantial attack. A car believed to be the one he was picked up in the night of his disappearance was later found burned out at Harper's Bay, not far from Pennycook. Different theories have been put forward over the years about who was responsible for Billy's murder. Some criminal sources said he'd crossed gangsters or a Glasgow kingpin ordered the hit after a drug deal gone wrong. In other media reports, it was claimed the murder was linked to money he owed for sex workers at his sauna, which was based here in Edinburgh's new town. But senior police officers told the Daily Record the main suspect was Alex Cameron, a notorious drug dealer. Cameron was murdered in 2015. Three years ago, a retired senior officer from the former Lothian and Borders police force who investigated Billy's murder told a newspaper that Cameron was a good suspect as he had motive and the capacity for violence. The officer believed the hit was ordered by another man connected to Cameron. A phone call showed a call was made to this man around the time Billy's body would have been dumped, but there wasn't enough evidence to bring charges. Criminal sources said Billy was asked to get into a car by people he knew and taken to a building at New Craig Hall where Cameron was reported to have a glazing firm. Then his body was dumped in Wasteland, nearby, off the A1. In the years following Billy's death, his family was mired in controversy and once again in the headlines. His wife, Julie, escaped jail after stealing tens of thousands of pounds from severely disabled clients while working as a carer in Edinburgh. The judge said she escaped a prison sentence because she was a first-time offender. Julie has always strongly rejected claims of any criminal ties or links to the seedy underworld of Edinburgh's sex trade, saying that her husband was a good-natured guy who was not in debt to moneylenders. She said the murder had a devastating effect on her and their three children. His sister told the press that she thought claims about criminal links had been exaggerated. Lorraine said Billy was very protective of his family and of her. In an interview with the National Newspaper, she said she believed he might have been threatened weeks before his murder, but she believed he wouldn't have told her so as not to worry her. Lorraine said he hinted he was going to die, 
but it was alleged he told her that he wasn't scared of dying because he'd be reunited with his siblings, Catherine and Avril, who had died at a young age. Ten years after the murder, his family issued a renewed appeal for anyone with information to come forward. The statement read, We've spent ten Christmases, birthdays and Father's Days without knowing how or why the one person who should be here to celebrate with us died. We have and will always miss having a husband, dad and brother at these family occasions and we hope someone, somewhere, has the compassion and humility to come forward to help the police and our family. At that time, the police issued a statement saying detectives were as determined as ever to catch Billy's killer. Detective Inspector Scott Cunningham said, It has now been 10 years since Billy Sibold was murdered and we've never given up on our efforts to bring those responsible to justice. His family were robbed of a loving husband and father in the cruelest of circumstances and we remain as determined as ever to achieve justice for them. We firmly believe that the key to solving his murder lies in the local community and we're appealing directly to anyone with information to come forward and help Billy's family put his memory to rest. He added, We understand that people may have previously been reluctant to approach police with any information they had at the time of his murder. However, we recognise that with the passage of time, people's personal circumstances and loyalties may have changed and they may now be willing to share any information they have with us. Billy's murder remains one of Edinburgh's most notorious unsolved cases. In response to a Freedom of Information request last year, Police Scotland said the murder was one of 57 undetected homicides. This means that no suspect has ever been formally identified as an accused or charged with the offence. Police Scotland stressed that there is an important difference between undetected and unresolved. With an unresolved murder, a suspect could have been identified though not charged, placed on petition or no indictment served due to insufficient evidence at the time. It would also be considered unresolved if the suspect had been found not guilty or committed suicide prior to trial and nobody else was being pursued in connection with the case. But in November 2023, Police Scotland told the Edinburgh Evening News Billy's murder was being treated as unresolved and not undetected. They stress this had not changed recently. A Police Scotland spokesperson said, Unresolved murders are never closed and Police Scotland is fully committed to identifying those people responsible for all such cases. Police Scotland works closely with the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service and meets regularly to review outstanding unresolved murders from across the country to maximise the ability to deliver justice for grieving families, irrespective of the passage of time. The murder of William Sibold remains unresolved and any new information about his death will be assessed and investigated. Police Scotland does not consider any case closed until it's resolved and people can still provide information by calling police on 101 or Crime Stoppers Scotland on 0800 555 111 where callers can remain anonymous. <laughs>